In this episode, we are going to solve this problem. He says, find the node voltages and current in all parts of the circuit. So we have our circuit drawn and we are to find the node voltages at the various nodes and also the current passing through the unknown branches. So I have the circuit and I'll use the same circuit for the analysis first we have to identify the number of nodes we have so here we can see that there is one and this is the second node and we can see that this whole part is forming the third node because all the branches they are meeting at the base do you understand so don't say this part is a node this part is a node no they are all meeting at a particular point so this whole point is the node so we have three of the nodes and we have to ground one so i'll prefer to ground the base node as my reference node so here the v is equal to what zero and i'll consider the other two as my non-reference node so i'll call here as my v1 the node 1 and v2 as my node 2 so here you can see that there is a voltage source but it is connected between two non-reference nodes mainly straight away there is going to be a super node and the rest is we can see a current source here we can also see a current source here so let's start the analysis for the node since there are currents we are going to assign current to the parts. Please pay attention. So this two amperes current is coming. So it is going to split itself here as I1. Remember, in any branch that has a voltage source, we are not going to assign current because this current is going to help us write an expression in terms of voltage. And now this branch is already having voltage so we cannot do anything about it. So I'll assign current here also as I2. So I have I2 over here. And now we can also see that I2, as it comes, it is going to split itself here as I3. And this part is already having a current, which is 7 amperes. So now we have current assigned in the circuit what do we do again we are now going to apply our kcl and see how best we can analyze the case but because there are two nodes now node one and node two if i start to consider node one because it is a super node i'm going to also consider node two meaning whatever current is moving through into node one is going to add to the current moving into node 2 and whatever current is leaving node 1 is going to add to the current leaving node 2 so let's look at what happens at the super node so at the super node that's for node 1 and node 2 node 2 what is happening now in node one let's look at the inside current the current that are moving inside we can see that this two amperes current is moving into node one so that is going to be two is there any other current moving into node one no but when we consider node two there's a current also moving into node two this is the two i2 current is moving into it so that is going to be plus I2. Do you understand? We are done with current entering, which is equal to what current is leaving node 1. I2 is also leaving node 1. So that is still going to be I2 plus I1 is leaving node 1. Now I2, I3 is also leaving, and plus you can see that this 7 amperes current is also leaving. So now we have our KCL written. Remember, all this analysis that we are doing is for super nodes. 
is a situation where a voltage source is connected between two non-reference nodes, as in the case of node 1 and node 2. What do we see? We have something common. I2 is here. I2 is here. So our equation is going to be 2 is equal to I1 plus we have I3 plus 7. So this is our KCL equation. So we have to now express this current I1 and I3 in terms of what? Voltage. So my I1 is going to be, when we look at I1, it is moving from the voltage V1 to the reference node, which is zero. So meaning that is V1 minus zero through the resistor two. And I, we can also see I3. I3 is also moving from the voltage of V2 to the reference node, which is zero, through the resistor four. Let's also try to write for I2 because we will need it to calculate for the current. I2 now is moving from the voltage source V1 to V2 and through the resistor 10 ohms. So now let's try to bring it back into the current equation. So that is going to give us 2 is equal to I1, which is V1 minus 2 plus I3. And that is going to be V2 on 4 plus 7. Do we see that? Now we have the value for, or we have an expression for the current. After solving this, we are going to get your equation to be 2V1 plus V2 is equal to negative 20 as your equation. One. So this is equation one from the current equation. Now we need um, our equation two, but where do you think we can get equation two? We can get equation two by considering the voltage measured between voltage one at the first node and voltage two at the second node. But pay attention to the sign. We can see that here is negative, this is positive, meaning the voltage two is of high magnitude than the voltage one so the measure is v2 minus v1 was measured to be what two volts that's two and this can be rearranged so that we can get our equation as negative v1 plus v2 is equal to two let's call this as our equation two so now we have two equation in terms of v1 and v2 solving simultaneously solving equation one and equation two we are going to get our v1 to be equal to negative 7.33 volts and our v2 is also going to give us negative 5.33 volts so now we have the node voltages this node has a voltage of negative 7.33 volts and this has a voltage of 5 negative 0.33 volts so we can now use this to find for the currents i1 and i2 and i3 so our i1 which is going to be v1 on 2 which is negative 7.33 on 2 and that is going to give us a current of negative 3.665 amperes. Our I2, which is V1 minus V2. So that is going to be negative 7.33 minus another negative, which is going to be 5.33 on 10. And our I2 is going to give us a current of zero negative 0 0.2 amperes now i3 i3 which is v2 on 4 which is negative 5.33 on 4 this i3 current is going to be negative 1.33 amperes so with this we have our voltages measured and our currents 
also measure. So this is the nodal analysis with voltage source. So let's look at the second example so that we can get the idea. The next example. In example two, it says find the node voltages using the nodal analysis. So we have our circuit and we are to find the node voltages using the nodal analysis. So first, let's find the number of nodes here. So, so here we are going to have node 1, node 2, node 3, and node 4. So straight away, let's find and ground one of the nodes as our reference node. So I'll use here as my reference node with V is equal to zero. And I will assign my voltages V1 to the first node, V2 and V32, the remaining nodes. So here, let me start to also assign the current because this branch already has a voltage source. I'm not going to assign current to it, but we can see that the voltage source is going to produce current, which is going to, let's say the current is going to move this way and that way. And I'll call here I1 and I'll call this my I2. I2 is also going to, or I1 is going to split itself into two, and that is going to be I3, I4. Then I4 is going to split and we are going to get i5 so this is our current and the analysis so here we have each of the resistors to be one ohm one ohm so first let's see if the rules of the analysis using the voltage source applies here the first rule our solution from rule one which says if a voltage source is connected between an non-reference node and a reference node, the voltage is set to the non-reference node. So this makes V1 calculation be simple because the voltage source is between the non-reference node, which is V1 and the reference node, and that is going to help us say V1 is simply equal to what? 10 volts and there is no other voltage source so there's no super node going to be formed so we are true with node one so here we can go to node two so at node two we can write our case here for node two which we can see that our i1 is equal to i3 living plus i4 also living let's try to express i1 i3 and i4 in terms of what voltage so my i1 is going to be we can see that it is moving from v1 to v2 so over, divided by resistance so the resistor is one so it is going to give you the same thing over one are you okay and my i3 is also moving from v2 to the ground which is going to be v2 minus zero over the resistor one which is also going to be the same thing as v2 everything is over one and our i4 is also moving from v2 minus v3 divided by the resistance which is one ohm so it is also going to give you the same thing so when we try to bring it in we are going to get i1 which is v1 minus v2 equal to i3 which is also v2 plus i4 which is v2 minus v3 so we have the expression this way we can simplify this by getting v1 minus 3 v2 plus v3 equal to zero so we know the value for v1 from this let's call this equation a the value for v1 which is 10 so when you put in the value of the 10 that will be 10 minus 3 v2 plus v3 
equal to zero. This is going to help us establish an equation which is 3v2 minus v3 equal to 10. That is going to give us equation 1 from the node 2. Now let's look at what is happening at node 3. At node 3, let's try to write our KCL. So we can also see that the current I2 plus I4, they are entering and I5 is leaving. So we can write them in terms of voltages. We know I2. I2 is going to move from the V2. Our I2 current is moving from I V1 minus V3 divided by the resistor, which is 1. Now our I5 for I4, we already have it written. So our I5 is also moving from V3 to the reference nodes. That will be V3 minus 0 over 1. So we have it that way. So we can bring them in. I2 already, we have written it as V1 minus V3 plus I4. We already have it as V2 minus V3 equal to I5, which is what? V3. So when we simplify this by putting the value of V1, which is 10, this is going to help us to get an equation as 10 minus v2 so we are going to get 10 plus v2 minus 3 v3 equal to 0 so this can be v2 minus 3 times v3 equal to negative 10 as our equation 2 so we can solve equation one and equation two simultaneously and our voltage is, is going to be v2 will give us a voltage of five volts and v3 is also going to give us a voltage of five volts we already have v1 and we end the analysis so what you have to know is your super node and the first rule where if a voltage source is between the reference and the ref non-reference you set the voltage to the non-reference node. I hope by now you should get the understanding of the node analysis. Thank you for watching this episode. Subscribe to the channel. Check out for the next episode on the next subtopic. See you.